Pour yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Russ Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. Yeah, it is Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast presented by our awesome YouTube page, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Please check that out. We appreciate it when you do. Already have posted this morning the Ross Tucker football podcast. What an epic Sunday in the National Football League. It was a pretty cool college football Saturday as well, especially that Penn State-Indiana game was thrilling, unique ending in so many different ways. You can always check me out on social media at Ross Tucker NFL. A lot of you know this already, but if you engage with any of my podcast related tweets or anything that's posted at all by at Ross Tucker pod on Twitter or Instagram, or even when I post it on Facebook, you have a chance to win a little something, some at the end of the week, sign press pass or football card or picture, whatever you want. Just make sure you're following me at Ross Tucker NFL, as well as at Ross Tucker pod and engage, engage Maverick, engage in some way, a little Top Gun reference. Also make sure you engage with at FBall Game Plan on Twitter, Football Game Plan on YouTube. That's where you can find my guy, Emery Hunt. He is everywhere these days. Now I see him on social media, at FBall Game Plan. He's literally talking on TV with – TVs behind them of him on TV. Like the ultimate flex that you could ever have. Unbelievable. Hello, Emery. What's going on, Ross, man? It's, it, you know, we, we worked hard to get that up there on the screen, too. It was trying to figure out how, you know, we were AV experts in a land where there's supposed to be AV experts, but we were able to get it done and flex properly on your TV screen. That was so cool, man. So cool. I loved it. I also love Emery's draft guide. Footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide. If you've been listening to this show for a while or watching on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, you know that Emery is an absolute stud, a treasure trove of information about every college prospect there is. That's exactly what you can get from his draft guide. Footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide. By the way, a little bit of a new format this week. Emery and I were talking, and we already break down a top prospect or two in a bunch of games each week. And I usually ask Emery what he thinks about the game. We thought, why not actually give you guys our picks against the spread, kind of like we do on Even Money. Now, it's not going to be every game like we do on the Even Money podcast for the NFL, because obviously in college football, there's a lot, lot, lot more games, right? So um, it's not going to be quite like that. But the games we break down, we, we're still going to give you the top prospects. Still going to give you Emory's breakdown for those of you that like to learn about these guys before they become NFL players ahead of the draft and have something to watch, almost homework, if you will, for Saturdays. We're also going to tell you who we like to come out on top against the spread. Makes it a little bit more fun. All of these spreads, by the way, are from the DraftKings Sportsbook app. More on that a little bit later. Emery, let's start with Memphis at Cincinnati. Memphis is getting five and a half points. I want to start, though, with the Memphis quarterback, Brady White. He's a guy that played in the Army Bowl uh, one year when I was doing that game. Went to Arizona State transferred to Memphis, and he's really found a home there with the Tigers. Yeah, and what I like about him is the fact that he has very good touch and timing on his passes. You talk about a player that can put the ball in the right spot where it needs to be to help maximize, you know, a receiver's run after the catch ability or rack yards, and that's a skill in itself where, in and of itself, where you have to really maximize your opportunities on every given play, and that's why Memphis's offense – their passing game is so explosive because Brady Smith or Brady White, I'm sorry, is doing a great job of putting the ball where it needs to be. Receivers are able to do dynamic things with the ball in their hands. They don't have to break stride. Love that about his game. I also like how he's able to move within the pocket. So he has good pocket uh, manipulation, as they like to call it, but he moves well. He's able to navigate through trash. Now, his arm strength isn't where it needs to be, 
Um, and, I, you know, that's something that I guess guys can work on. Uh, and that's something that he's going to have to really work on, you know, at the NFL level. Otherwise, you're going to have to win every time with, you know, that timing, anticipation, accuracy. And it's hard to do that on a consistent basis. Um, so, therefore, arm strength at some point in time will have to come into play. Uh, otherwise, he's going to find himself just solidifying his role as a QB2 as opposed to a starter at the NFL level. But I do like his game. I do think, you know, with the, the timing and the accuracy that he has in, you know, in the short to intermediate game, it helps him out uh, to be successful out there on game day. It's unbelievable, by the way, Emery, how many running backs have come from Memphis recently. Like Henderson – uh Pollard Gibson last year and then they say the best one was this year the kid that opted out right yeah and, and that's it's so bizarre and when it's funny when you watch Memphis run the ball and they're so consistent in their backs and so good that you lose track of which ones you know are the current starting ones you had Patrick Taylor you know a couple years ago as well had a thousand yards with Henry and it was like Wait, which back am I watching? Because all of these dudes are good. It's like legit plug and play. And I hate to say that because then it leads, you know, credence to people saying you can just get any running back and throw them in there. Well, no, Memphis did a great job of recruiting fantastic running backs, and they just have a stable of fantastic running backs, so much so that they had to keep Antonio Gibson at wide receiver because he wasn't going to play over, you know, uh, Daryl Henderson and all those guys like that. So, hey, put another – terrific athlete on the field and they continue to have success so it's a testament to their ability to recruit develop so therefore when they go from rb1 to rb2 it's really just going from rb1 to rb1 a yeah kenneth gainwell gainwell the guy that opted out this year and so think about this for a second okay he's supposed to be the highest touted of them all so let's say he goes second round maybe the memphis tigers are going to have four running backs drafted fourth round or better in three years. I mean, Henderson third round, Pollard fourth round in 2019, Gibson fourth round 2020, and now Gainwell probably second or third round, maybe higher, 2021. That is incredible. As for Brady White, by the way, Emery, you know, he was very thin at the Army Bowl, very slender. Not an impressive physically looking, you know, physical kid. Didn't look, look like like he had power in his upper body or lower body. That was four years ago now or whatever it was. But he was not a naturally powerful or strong kid. That's for sure. Some of these kids come in and, like, you know, they're, they're put together. He was not. Um, as for Cincinnati – they got a cornerback you like, Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Let me just say, you better be good if your nickname is Sauce. <laughs> exactly. And he's a sophomore. And, you know, as a freshman last year, he was one of the top interceptors in the country, just kept finding the football. And you fast forward to this season, he's one of the top in the country. I want to say he's tied for first, finding the football with three interceptions already on the season. So, I mean, you have height. Weight, speed, instincts, ball skills, sign me up. So I think this guy is going to be a, a three-year player. Um, so he's going to play next year as a junior and, and head to the NFL draft because he's been that good. And I like his instincts and his ability to really just attack the football. Um, and him being a taller corner, I do think he has the ability to play both press and off uh, because he's able to drive on the football. And so when you watch him play and knowing he's the number one corner and team still try to test him he's going to find the football even if it's going away from him so I, I like his game I like his his mentality I like his tenacity um, and give me cornerbacks that find the football on my team 15 days out of the week 28 hours a day because when you are able to turn the ball over you're giving my offense more opportunities to put points up on the board all right so Cincinnati's laying five and a half points Emery who do you like in this one defense and you know when you look at defense you instantly look at the bearcat so i think because of a great defense when you have great defenses going up against great offenses 
I will always tend to side with the defense because you get stops and stops are possessions and stops are, you know, that takes up time. And, you know, and Cincinnati's offense with Desmond Ritter has done a good job in, in producing points. But those possessions that they will steal away from Memphis are going to be critical. And if you have the best defense in a high octane offensive, you know, conference, you're going to be on your your uh, very good side. You're going to be on a, on a lot of sides of, of winning uh, football games. We saw this last week with SMU. I think we see it again this week against Memphis. All right. So you're laying the five and a half points. Yeah. So am I. I think Cincinnati is one of the 10 best teams in the country. I think they're awesome. They just smashed SMU, who was ranked in the top 20. Cincinnati, I mean, they took it to Army, who's six and one. Uh, Cincinnati is a good, good football team. Up next, big rivalry game. Emory, Michigan State coming off a loss to Rutgers at Michigan, who pretty much housed the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And the guy you want to talk about is a big boy. I didn't know that much about him. Michigan quarterback Joe Milton. Yeah, me either. And it was interesting. The reason why I chose him to, to, to talk about was due to the fact that he had a really good game and he was named the starter. You know, And I spent all week talking about how we didn't know anything about Minnesota's offense. I mean, uh, Michigan's offense. You know, we didn't know how Joe Milton would do at quarterback. We didn't know about their run game. You know, they had to opt out. Uh, their offensive line, we we didn't know much about. We knew they had a great defense with Quiddy Pay and company. Uh, and how would that hold up against the passing game of, of Minnesota? And he did fairly well. But the offense is really what stole the show. Charbonnet is a real good running back. I liked him as a high school player. Um, and I'm glad he's having some success. He reminded me a lot of uh, Robert Smith. Um, you know, that play with the Minnesota Vikings, that long stride and just a, that smooth speed to pull away. Chris Evans, we talked about here on the podcast before and how he's able to make guys miss. Um, but Milton was the one that really stood out because he's a junior. So he's been there a while. And from what they were saying about him at Michigan, like the Michigan coaches and, and people around the program talking about him in the same breath of Cam Newton. And so when you look at him playing against Minnesota, he has a big frame. He was very under control in the QB run game. You look at how he was able to, to be effectively efficient, I like to use that term, in the passing game. So when you have those traits, and again, it's only one game, but you, you like the calm, you like the uh, efficiency, you like the ability in the run game, you like his arm strength that we've seen him rip it before, and he was accurate going intermediate to deep down the field. You like a lot of the tools he has. And if he's able to string these games together, we saw Cam Newton do this at Auburn in his one season. Now, granted, he was coming off of an undefeated year at Blaine Community College, but in that one season at Auburn, you know, he was a relative unknown at the QB position. Same thing with Milton. So if he's stringing these games together and Michigan continues to play like they did against Minnesota, then you're going to hear more about Joe Milton being a one-and-done guy and going into the NFL as one of those underrated prospects. You talk about who's the next Joe Burrow. Well, based on what we saw against Minnesota, it has the potential to be a guy like Joe Milton, who has the physical stature, 6'5", 240. So he's a big dude like you talked about, and he has all the physical traits. And from what people are saying about him, he has the, the, the focus of a pro quarterback as far as working on his game and working on his skills. That's a lot of momentum trending in the right direction. So I'm excited to see how he's going to do this week against Michigan State and the rest of the week because you're only going to get, what, eight or nine games. And if they are doing well, they get to the playoffs or Big Ten championship game. So I'm excited to see how Milton does because I believe he he's going to be one of those guys who's going to shoot up draft boards and is going to make that decision tougher for him to stay or go like we saw with Dwayne Haskins. You had such a phenomenal, you know, season as a redshirt sophomore he had no choice but to come out so we'll see what milton does but he got off to a great start against minnesota wow really interesting um yeah i mean I, you know dylan mccaffrey transferred so clearly the minute that michigan coaches liked milton they knew milton was going to be the guy and what a great start i mean minnesota usually has a pretty good defense to put up 40 some points like that for milton and that you're comparing them to some of the same skills as cam newton that's that says something all right michigan state is getting 26 and a half points 
in this game. Emery, who do you like uh, with the spread? You hope Michigan State comes back and bounces back from what we saw against Rutgers. But what gave me some concern is how they were able to not handle the QB run game with no overdraw uh, at Rutgers. You're going to get a lot of the QB run game against Michigan and along with those backs. And Michigan just has much better athletes at this point than Rutgers does and Shiano's re first year, to put it that way. I like Michigan all the way, so I'm, I'm laying those points with Michigan. I can't do it, man. Too many points. It. It's, it's, it's a rivalry game. I think Michigan State, new coaching staff. I don't know if they took Rutgers lightly, but first game, whatever. I just – now, Michigan, Harbaugh won't mess around. He'll keep going. Harbaugh will try to cover the spread. Harbaugh will try to put a bunch of points on the board. But I'm, I'm going to take Michigan State in the 26.5 points. I got to think they got rid of some of their first game mistakes that they'll play better. I don't know if Michigan's going to be able to repeat that performance. And it's such a rivalry game. I just can't see Michigan State losing by 27 points like that. So I'm going to take Michigan State and the points. I hope my uh, my uncle Mel, Mel Tucker, the, the coach for Michigan State, <laughs> uncle Mel, I hope he doesn't, uh, I hope he doesn't let me down. Mel, speaking of letting you down, DraftKings never lets you down. Speaking of college football, Ohio State, Penn State, Saturday night, under the lights, and to celebrate the showdown in the Happy Valley, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new users the chance to turn $1 into $100 when placing a bet on either Ohio State or Penn State. Additionally, DraftKings Sportsbook giving all new users the chance to receive a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. So if you're not an NFL guy, if you're more a college football guy, DraftKings is helping you make it rain. They got those odds boosts as well. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ROSS when you sign up to get this can't-miss offer. Either Penn State or Ohio State, bet $1 on them and cash $100 if they win. That's $1 to win $100 when you use promo code ROSS during sign-up. Limited time, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, must be 21 or older, New Jersey or PA only. Bonus comprised of a first deposit bonus, first bet match equal to $500. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Next game, Emery. Let's get some rice and southern miss in our life. Rice is getting two and a half points at southern miss. And I like when you throw an offensive lineman in there for me every once in a while. Let's talk about rice offensive lineman Javon Wolford. You know, it's interesting. I was last year at weeks. It was week zero. I was at Colgate and Villanova up at Colgate and beautiful campus, by the way. Hamilton, New York is, is awesome in the fall. Uh, or early, late summer. So I'm up there and I'm watching Villanova and I was checking out the, you know, the uh, defensive end for Colgate. But I'm looking at this offensive tackle and I'm like, this left tackle, I'm like, man, he's really impressive. And I saw he was a senior. Like, wow, he's really doing work. This is going to be my sleeper of the, you know, the, the year. And it was Javon Wolford. And then as the season goes on, uh, I'm thinking like, okay, this is a guy that, you know, you want to keep, keep an eye on. He had a really good game. Can we dive into his tape a little bit more? And then after the season, I see he grad transferred. I'm like, wow, so he had another year. So he grad transferred to Rice, which is a, a great move for him. Um, and he goes on there, he earns a starting job, and he's he has very good technique. You know, his feet and hands are, are always where they need to be. He's never overextending. He's playing under control. Um, he's going to – I think he's going to get a little bit stronger in that Rice program as opposed to what he was doing at Colgate just because of the – step up in competition. So I'm excited to see how he's going to consistently play uh, this year. I know they had their first game last weekend, and I saw a little bit of it. Uh, you know, I was impressed with what I saw, but I want to see the consistency build on, built on what he did in week one, or their week one, but I also want to see him continue to build on that. But when you have the patience and the technique, I think that already puts him ahead of the game. I just want to see him be a little bit more physically dominant at the point of attack, but as far as like the finesse game, the footwork, the hands, the 
patience he has at spades. Awesome. I love it. What about Southern Miss's wide receiver, Tim Jones? You don't see big, big play wide receivers that are deep threats like him. You know, he's averaging like 20 yards a catch. And that's ridiculous. That's Flipper Anderson territory when you're doing that, man. When you talk about, you know, getting down the field. And he's going to get a lot of opportunity because Southern Miss's offense works touchdown to check down. And they have two good receivers. And he's a senior right now. The other one is a sophomore. Um, and, and he's a bigger receiver, too. So they have these taller guys, these these stretch vertical guys that can get deep down the field. And and all Abraham, Jack Abraham, has to do is just put the ball up. And these guys do a great job of, of tracking and stacking and making the catch. And so when you look at, at what he can do, um, I like how he attacks the ball at his highest point. I like how he's able to accelerate to the football when it's in the air. And if Rice is not careful, they're going to get beat over top a couple times in this ball game because of those wideouts they have out there on the perimeter. Dude, I love the uh, stacking and tracking. I love the Flipper Anderson reference. You're on fire today, Emery. Flipper Anderson. I wonder how many of our listeners even remember Flipper Anderson for the Rams. I want to say number 83, maybe. I can't remember. 83. I remember being a young, young kid. Uh, watching that Thursday night football game on TNT, and he was lighting up my Saints in the Superdome. Yeah. He was, he was 300 something yards receiving that day. Saints had to win, but uh, they couldn't stop Liberty Anderson. The Rams came out victorious that night. I was so upset, man. I remember that. Um, I'm going to take, uh, and, I, and I love, the, uh, I, I love the, the, the stacking and tracking as well. I'm going to take Rice. I think this is a toss up game, could go either way. So I'll take the two and a half points. If I think either team could win, I'll take the two and a half points. How about you, Emery? Yeah, I'll take the two and a half as well. I don't trust Southern Miss defensively. You know, they give up a lot of big plays. And I'll just say Rice could be in trouble over the top. But Southern Miss's defense is not the Southern Miss defense that I that I once knew. So I, I struggle to see how their defense can slow down Rice. And Rice has the benefit of fresh legs. You know, this is their second game. So they'll be more amped to really, you know, push the pace in this one. It's a good point as well. All right, finally, Kansas State at West Virginia. Kansas State's getting two and a half points. Let's talk about their cornerback, A.J. Parker. Now, here's a name that when I when I threw it out there, fans, college football fans should remember this guy because he was a really good college football player. I love the fact that he was – I called him a football player because that's how he played out there. It didn't matter what position he w- was – you wanted him on your team, and he was a Kansas State guy, and that was Chris Canty. Remember him at the corner yeah. position? That's what I see in A.J. Parker. Parker can play off coverage really well. It, when you talk about going from a dead stop to driving on the football and making plays on it, he does it. He's not, you know, um, surprised by a receiver, you know, breaking off his route. He stays under control. He is playing essentially – the quarterback in the football, the receiver is just the byproduct of, you know, of all of that happening because he's just right there, but he is really under control every time he's he's coming out of his break and he's focused on the quarterback and the football. He stays within the same realm of the receiver, but when the ball is in the air, he treats it like he's a receiver. And he's going to, he's going to get it. So I like Parker and Parker is, uh, you know, he's, he's feisty. He likes to, to hit, you know, so he's a good asset in run support as well. He breaks on the football. He has good ball skills. And I'm talking about from catching interceptions to batting the ball down. You like that about Parker. He's a senior bowl watch list guy. I'm a big fan of his game. He's one of those players that I tweeted out last night. When you look at guys like Tyler Lockett, Robert Woods, the guys that I would hate to coach or hate to uh, play against but love to coach, and I want on my team, A.J. Parker is of that same ilk. All right. Then what about West Virginia linebacker Tony Fields? Good defense. And we talked about their defensive linemen. Uh, before, but I like him because he's able to go sideline to sideline, and he is a he's a very good impactful tackler. So he's not one of these peekaboo linebackers, these wait and see linebackers. He's going to have that physical discussion in the hole right away. And guys like that, again, I want on my team. I don't want these guys that are just gonna you know eat up blockers and and you know allow a, a offensive lineman to change their position for them, go from linebacker to free safety. I want those linebackers to be able to attack downhill meet the run game where it needs to be met at and make impactful plays. And that's what he does very well. Kansas State getting two and a half points. Who do you like, Emory? Kansas State, man. Deuce Vaughn is one of my favorite little running backs in college football. I I think they have great depth in the backfield. Number two, I can't remember his name, but 
between number two and Deuce Vaughn, who's 22. They have tremendous tailbacks. I love the versatility. I think Kansas State rolls in this one. Yeah, I'm surprised they're getting two and a half points. I think Kansas State's a better team than West Virginia. I think they win the game outright if you want to look at it on the money line. But I'll take the two and a half points right there. So you and I agree on Kansas State, Rice, and Cincinnati. We're going head-to-head -head on Michigan State, Michigan. Let's go, Sparty. Keep it within 27. Let's go, Sparty. Check him out. F-Ball Game Plan on Twitter, Football Game Plan on YouTube, and, of course, footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Not only are we still breaking down prospects, but now we'll give you a few picks against the spread as well. Other than that, the keg is kicked. We are all tapped out. Thanks for listening to the College Draft Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, Even Money, and the Business of Sports. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.